says, if you wouldn't mind giving us, uh, you know, now that we have you, I want to use this opportunity if you feel comfortable to tell us a little bit about your story. You don't need to go into any details that you don't want to get into, but you know, tell us about your your Islam, bro, your Dean, your journey. Let us know. Okay. Yes. So, um, my parents. So, my mother was a seven seven day Adventist Christian, and my father he wasn't really anything, but some of his family members were Muslim. So, I was exposed to Islam when I was younger through his brothers and sisters. Um, and I would share time with, sometimes I would stay with my mom, sometimes I would stay with my dad, but mostly my dad. Um, when I was 15 years old, I was really, you know, trying to find God because I used to go to church with my mom, but I didn't really feel that place. You know, I would ask a lot of questions and get in trouble, especially when it came to, you know, Jesus dying for our sins and a lot of other things like that. Those questions, it just didn't sit right with me just knowing like, God would kill somebody innocent for us. I would ask those type of questions or even like, um, because we're seven day Adventists, we have certain modesty guidelines that we had to follow. But if I went to another church, I was like, why didn't they cover their head? Or how come some Christians eat pork and others don't? Like for seven day Adventists, you know, we had dietary restrictions that we follow. We couldn't eat pork or shellfish. But if I would go other places or my other friends, you know, they would practice their Christianity so differently to the point it would make me feel like I don't understand. And nobody was really answering my questions. So when I was 15, I asked my uncle and he actually gave me a Quran. So that was the first time that I read the Quran and it resonated with me. And when I got to college, Alhamdulillah, I took my Shahada and I decided to become Muslim. And it wasn't really you know, easy because my mom's side of the family really wasn't for it. They weren't happy about it. Um, but I just kept praying and making dua and yeah, that's, that's basically my story. I, from getting the Quran when I was 15, it really helped me take that journey to accept Islam into my heart. So Alhamdulillah, I'm happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used my uncle and my aunts to introduce me to it and guide me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. What is one thing? Aside from you know being being Muslim, that one thing that you're truly grateful for now after Islam. What I'm truly grateful for. Yeah. Um, that's hard. There's so many things I'm grateful for. I'm definitely um, grateful for modesty. Uh, that was a hard journey for me, especially because my um, parents are from the Caribbean, and I don't know if you know about Caribbean culture, carnival, things of that nature, but modesty is definitely. Um, something that's only done in church or only done in a spiritual setting all, all the rest of the day is very dressing in a provocative manner is the norm and is basically expected you know it's taught at a young age you know that's what women or or ladies are supposed to do but in actuality um it very much took a horrible toll on my mental health and my self-esteem because i realized that you know th being taught or pushed that your body or you dressing a certain way is the only way people will value you um is not something good that young women should should be taught or grow up under so i'm definitely thankful for modesty um definitely when i took my shahada i wore the hijab right away that was so easy for me it actually felt freeing because i felt like okay i don't have to conform anymore i don't have to be or meet everybody's expectations now i can just I felt free and like I really did feel freeing to cover myself and I take and looking back I did not you know appreciate it when my uncle would express it to me hey you know I'm not trying to force anything on you but you should dress more modestly I didn't really appreciate it and now looking back on it I that's the number one appreciate and toheed you know the oneness of God because that's what I was searching for, I was just like, this doesn't make sense to me. And so now having the unity of God in Islam, I had so much peace because before I was so confused and it's now it's like, now it's not confusing anymore. I know I don't worship a man, uh, that I don't worship a trinity, we're just one God. So those two things, Tawheed and modesty, I definitely appreciate it. MashaAllah, sis, Allah Mubarak. May Allah continue to bless you and your uncle. Uh, to the utmost degree i mean and it's it's great um, that you you looked at it as in it's freeing you know and i understand i can't understand the female struggle because you know to me it's just like oh just cover up you know but for women it's different right it's, yeah. it's the emotional it's the whole feeling like you're not fitting in it's the whole pressure it's the whole societal expectation so i'm not gonna front and act like i know what you know y'all go through on a day-to-day -day basis but the fact that you know you said it 
it's a living testament that it can be done. And it is something that it is a choice, right? No one can force it, but mm -hmm. it is a choice that, that you took and alhamdulillah that you're, you're grateful for. Mm, yeah, because it takes, like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't know if you ever, but you guys, did you guys grow up in New York? I don't know if you did. So like, me and Rami in near Toronto. And on Toronto. Home, what about you? I, I grew up in, like, Florida and Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. Well, especially here, I grew my parents. They came to this country and I was born here in New York. So just going to high school, it was just the everyday pressure of, you know, if I dress too boyish, I would be criticized, not wearing enough makeup, cr criticism, especially from your own family members. I think that's what really takes a toll on you, especially for women, when you don't get that love and support from your family to be like, no, you're okay how you are. You don't need makeup. You don't need this. So I think that's why as for women, especially new reverts or even women who might have been born Muslim, modesty is such an issue because all day in the media, we're, we're bombarded with the beautiful woman looks like this or, or looks a certain way or men or even women downgrading you because you're not dressing appealing enough oh my gosh you're wearing that that's too baggy because even now like even though i i've been i'm 22 now so i've been muslim for a while i, I still even when i go to certain masters i can hear the little gossiping and chatter about certain things where mm. you know i'm just here like oh my gosh we we're supposed to be muslim so those type of things shouldn't matter to us mm -hmm. but we have to remember we are we live in America or we live in a Western world. Mm -hmm. So those things will still affect us and it's going to be a trial, but Alhamdulillah, we'll persevere as long as we make sure that we remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first. And we're not doing this for worldly gain. We're doing this for the hereafter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'll say this one last thing, because uh, I think we're going to inshallah have to add the next guest soon, but this is exactly why we need a sister's podcast because mm -hmm. of everything you just said is the narrative that like, you know, you know, sisters don't talk sisters and there's a standard in the eyes of women and the eyes of men. There's this like biz, uh, entire industry on beautification of women and everything. Uh, and all of this stuff is, for lack of a better term, un-Islamic. Mm. And this is why we need this podcast. So if you are able to learn the skills to be able to articulate that in a way where you impact the majority of people that hear it or everyone who hears it, then that is something, inshallah, that I think, I truly believe will go the distance for this mm. Inshallah, yeah. sis. And I just wanted to say one thing quickly because, you know, we do have a lot of people in the waiting room that when you do get your channel sorted out and you got the platform, inshallah, we'd love to do a collab with you. And uh, it would be our utmost honor, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Inshallah. So just reach out to us on Patreon when you got everything sorted out. Yes. And we'll get it taken care of. Salaamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. I think there's another thing too. It's, it's the perseverance aspect too. Like, we're more willing to stick through with things that we set out with an intention. It's impossible to have empathy for others if you're not patient. So, my love, bless you for that. First of all, I agree with the fact that the whole thing you said about friends, where it's like, if, if they're affecting you more than you're affecting them, then you should probably get some new friends. You want to be investing in stocks, shares, bonds. You want to be investing in crypto because there's this thing called inflation, which means every year that passes by, the value of a dollar goes lower and lower and lower. And the reason being is because they're printing more money, right? That's why money is haram. At least the paper money is haram. Provided that you're actually there and you're being a good father and the mother's being a good mother, best conditions. And behind the mic, Hamza, Andreas, Zortzis, we will go in with our final three with brother Angel, inshallah. Inshallah, bismillah rahman rahim it's not just a responsibility on you. It's a responsibility on all the children, especially your father. In our private area is very elastic. And yeah, if you go too fast, the skin will literally crease up into like the edge of like the little clipper things. And you will literally clip your skin. You don't want to be on YouTube or the internet or anything that, that amount of time. But it's, it's the, the fact is that's what we're doing.